operations 12 4 23. I will give the invocation. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of your wondrous gifts. We thank you for our ability to do the work of the people in Sumner County. We ask you to uh, help us make good decisions tonight, have uh, good conversation regarding the issues on the agenda, and we ask all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? Second. Terry Moss is the, 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 the motion and... Hey, uh, and Mr. Chairman, uh, agenda is for the minutes. Setting the agenda. I'm sorry. Oh, you're right. Okay, I'm sorry. Item three, approval of the agenda. Second. Second. Okay. You think? No, Yes. Approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. 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 It doesn't matter. <laughs> sorry. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, report of the chairman, I have none. Report of the county mayor. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have, uh, before uh, before I start this, I've got a presentation that we've got the architects from the park uh, to give. I thought that would be the best way to bring clarity to what's going on. Great. Um, I learned as well. So, uh, but to, uh, to go through some of the other stuff, uh, item 8A, progress on the roof and archive building, requested site meeting. Uh, that is set up for December 11th at 1 o'clock. So anyone that is interested in attending is welcome to attend that, that meeting. And that will, uh, will give you an idea of where we're going to go with the archives room. Uh, progress on the jail roof, we can discuss that at the same time. Uh, that meeting, they should be coming back with their recommendations here pretty soon, we hope. Uh, but they're, they're working on that. But uh, at that same meeting, you will have an opportunity to, uh, to speak about the jail room. Where will the meeting be at? Parking lot? Uh, we'll have it in my conference room. Your conference room. Yes. Okay. 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 Progress on the parking structure. Uh, everything is still on track for a June completion at this time. Uh, December 8th, we've got a meeting with the city of Gallatin to uh, try to resolve the uh, stormwater issues that we have. Uh, so we're, we're continuing to work on those. Uh, we do, uh, uh, we've got everything else is okay with parking structure at this time. Let's see here. Uh, discussion on a completion date for the new courthouse. I'll come back to item 8D. Uh, item 9, 9A, completion date for the new courthouse. Uh, we have got a special called meeting for the budget on uh, December 14th. Uh, we've got several meetings going on right now uh, that we're trying to get information for everybody on these. So uh, tomorrow we're meeting with ESA and SSOE. Wednesday we'll be meeting on the furniture and security cameras. Uh, I just mentioned Friday we're meeting on the stormwater issue for the, uh, uh, for the uh, gar uh, garage. And then also we have the, the life safety code issues uh, that are of the utmost importance. We're working on those. Uh, with the elevators and the emergency communication, the radio equipment in the basement. Uh, item 9B is a uh, discussion about the uh, concerns with the fire sprinklers. Uh, we have those insulated. Uh, about, uh, about all we can do other than <coughs> reconstruction up there. Uh, all of that was retrofitted uh, years ago. Uh, we're, we're a little bit limited on what we can do unless we come in and do a major construction project. Uh, so uh, if, if that's something, a direction that, that this group would like to take, we can certainly uh, start the bid process or, or at least put together more information on it. Did, did you consult uh, Marshall Boyd or anybody on, on that uh, before you um, insulated those pipes? No, okay. So no. It, it, we, 
We just, no, we basically just put some insulation on those that are exposed the best we could. Okay. Uh, the, the one sprinkler head that, uh, uh, the, where we had the problem with, uh, you know, we capped that off. So uh, fire inspector said we didn't need that in that location. Uh, just to refresh your memories from December, January, when we dealt with all those issues. Okay. Um, so from there, I want to go ahead and I want to move into the report. Before you go there, Commissioner yep. Jones, did you have a question for the mayor? Yes. Um, I had a couple that have come up along the way. Um, we're just going through the whole agenda right no, now. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll go back through, I, I think. I okay, think. this specific question just for the mayor. Um, I missed what you said on the um, parking structure um, completion date, June what? Uh, we're still looking at the month of June. I can't give you the exact day. Oh, okay. Is it yeah. going to hold yeah, in as it gets closer? On, it's still on target for June. Okay. Yeah. And I think there was one more. Oh, the, uh, a comment about the sprinklers. Um, we insulated the outside the park in the dormer in the unconditioned airspace. No, I don't think so. That's what he said. Yes, we've done. We've done what we can. Get I don't think you can even get to in that area. You can't get to that. Section. You can't get to all of it. Right. The so way, the way that it's constructed. My my ad, advice for whatever it's worth was to cut and cap anything that's beyond the wall. Yeah. I don't know why it wasn't done when we built that structure. Um, and it's, it looks like that's what was done to the one that blew the head off of it was, it was capped. So why not cut it back to where it's inside the wall and cap it there? If it's unneeded in the unused space, cut it inside in the conditioned air space and cap it there. Can you, can, can we look at that? I'll be, I'll be more than happy to talk to Kelly. Ask, ask if we can do yeah, that. I that may be an easy fix. I know you'd have to drain the system possibly to do it, but it'd be a cheap fix. If that was feasible, I mean, Com doable. compared to freezing and blowing, yeah. Right. I mean, I don't think it'd be worth looking into. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. All right. So let's go ahead and, if if we can, go ahead and move into that presentation. If please. Do we need to suspend the rules for that? That's your choice. We can do it under. under it's my part report. of your, under your yeah. report. Okay, let's just leave it under your report then. All right. Can we not just go back to the agenda? Well, <coughs> we'll go ahead and do this. this. This is actually item 8D, but we'll go ahead and do it now. I'm going to try to not go through every single date, but um, we give a brief overview. I'm Leland House, CSCG. Um, luckily, I've been part of this project from the beginning. Um, it's been a long kind of process, but it's been pretty fast paced based on, you know, timing. And, um, it's been fun to work on. So just to give a brief overview for everyone that's not aware about the park and the county parks master plan, basically in June 2015, um, William Brown needed his land to Summer County and in 2017 passed away giving Summer County $500,000 for the construction and uh, design of the William and Martha Brown Park as well as money towards technology for the Liberty Creek um, schools and obviously his land for the Liberty Creek school system. Um, in February of 2020 we were engaged as a company to help facilitate a parks master plan as part of the TDEC requirement in order to receive grant funding. Um, and then a month later, COVID hit, global pandemic, uh, put a pause to everything and then had to re-kick off in June of 2020. Um, went through 
reviewing uh, research analysis, Zoom calls with public, you know, the whole gambit during that global pandemic. Uh, and in September 2020, the Parks and Rec Advisory Board was created, also a requirement of that TDEC um, requirement in order to receive funds. In November, we um, got Summer County approval uh, for the County Parks Master Plan, and in December 2020, we applied for the TDEC grant in order to receive funding for the William and Martin Brown Park. Um, in June of 2021, TDEC announced um, that we did receive that LPRF grant for $500,000 to match uh, William Brown's $500,000 uh, donation to the park. In April of 2022, um, due to the pandemic, material costs, etc., they increased the grant funding to $625,000 instead of $500,000. Um, in April of 2022, um, we, uh, sorry, that was sitting right there. Um, that was due to COVID? Uh, yes. Material costs and. Yeah, they were um, continuously seeing with the LPRF state grants, they were continuously seeing bids come in higher. So the state made the offer that to increase the grant to 625,000, which required us to match the additional 125 because it's a 50-50 grant. So that's where the 125,000 came in for the local funding. So it's $625,000 grant from the state and then 625,000 500 from the Brown Trust and 125,000 local. At this point, is it proper to ask questions along the way? Because I feel like they're going to stack up. Um, you know, let, this is a very long presentation. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell you what, I think we should we should suspend the rules so that we can ask questions. Could I get a motion? Motion to suspend the rules. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, great. So, so go if ahead. I could get in the queue. Yeah. Um, so they the 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 state is this fed or is this state it's grant? State. So the local, state local parks and recreation funding said that we could up it because the cost of the funding um, was going up everywhere, but we had to match the the um what what they raised it to. Yeah, it Has the had the design for the park even been built at that point in time? A concept had been made. Concept. The concept had. So we chose to go ahead and contribute another 125000 just because we could get another 125000 at that time. Well, that came from local funds. Yes. So the commission or the budget committee must have passed that on it was in the, the last yeah, commission. Yeah. Okay, it was so. part of the budget process that next fiscal year. Taxpayer funds, right? Yeah. Okay, that was my point. Okay, I'm just following along. Okay, any other questions while they're stopped? Okay, continue on, thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. so um, in July of 2022, the contract was executed. Uh, March of 2023, we kicked off schematic design, made it through schematic design and through uh, design development. Um, in April of 2023, we won a Tennessee ASLA, that's American Society of Landscape Architecture, a, a merit award for analysis and planning. Um, we were chosen as the project for Liberty Creek Elementary for PBL STEM certification. And um, basically are in the process now of moving towards construction documentation, um, site plan review, TDEC review, and hopefully kicking off construction uh, in March, looking at a 10 to 12 month construction time frame. So hopefully being done by April of 2025. Um, deadline is July 4th, 2025. J July 4th, 2025? July 14th. 14. 7, 14, 20. That's our absolutely end date. So yeah. the goal is to be done before that so we can complete all of our final inspections. Because the TDEC will come out in, and periodically throughout the project and have inspections. Okay. Uh, next slide. So yeah, just going back. During COVID, we had this long uh, master plan um, process of meeting with the public, meeting with you know, the Parks Advisory Board, meeting with a lot of different entities. And obviously, you can see kind of a long schedule, I'm not going to get into all of it, but there was a bunch of virtual meetings and uh, 
ways to configure and pick up on SWOT analysis and um, uh, looking back at uh, demographics and I mean basically went through the whole gambit of the, the county in order to provide a uh, master plan. So if you go to the next slide. We had an outdoor meeting at the Bledsoe Lake Historical. Oh, <laughs> so these are just four snippets of the county uh, parks master plan. This is the 140 page document that was approved. Um, and so, you know, obviously we went through a lot of survey information, handed out surveys, uh, put up surveys in every single county park, um, which was great, had a lot of feedback, um, and that's pretty much all of the charts. Went through hydrography, or hydrolog hydrology, geography, everything, uh, concepts, demographics, what was happening to, you know, Davidson County that's influencing Summer County, basically looked at everything, come up with a large master plan with its short-term, mid-term, long-term goals. And one of the short-term goals is obviously for the William and Mark Brown Park due to the funding already being there. So um, these are just some examples of some of the pages. If you go to the next slide. Um, like I said, we won a Tennessee ASLA award and the uh, County Park Master Plan was approved in November of 2022. This was the original concept. Was it approved um, when? November 2020. 2020. 2020. Okay. Yeah, um, so yeah. So so going back, we then um, submitted a plan for TDEC. This was the original concept, um, hand sketch graphic that talked about basically a park with trails, a parking lot, pavilion. Um, using the existing farm road trail, the women walk around home, this is obviously elementary school and middle school under construction, nature trails, uh, natural overlooks, reusing a lot of the local materials from the construction of the elementary and middle schools, using a lot of the stone to create seating opportunities and save money. Um, so this was the original uh, master plan. And the intent was for this to be a passive park What kind of conditions would be put on that for usage? Would that be up to the school or for the county to put conditions on for the public to use? Joint, joint, yeah, joint for the county. I mean, somebody wanted to hold a concert there, a rock band concert. Yeah. Who would, how would you approve that? Through the schools or through the county or how would that be done? It'll be joint maintenance, but the county will have the in control over it. It could be like a written statement of intent when once it becomes completed or something or before it gets constructed. Yeah. Next slide. Yeah, so the uh, TDEC grant was awarded in June of 2021. They extended the grant in April of 2022 and the contract was executed in July of 2022. This was just a graphic that we produced for the County Parks Master Plan talking about using locally sourced materials, low impact trails, mow trails that, you know, instead of mowing this entire park, doing native seed to cut down on maintenance costs, um, repurposing site boulders that were removed from the construction of the lower school and middle school, um, you know, increasing habitat can go on and on, but this was just a, a quick perspective graphic of what we were envisioning. So now for the William and Mark and Brown Park specifically, we have made it through schematic design, design development, um, kind of a curveball, Liberty Creek Elementary wanted to uh, partner with us for STEM um, accreditation. Um, and so we've been working with the fifth graders of Liberty Creek, which has been awesome, 125 young minds, um, working on the park project and looking at ways to learn. Um, STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math, and so they're using this one project to teach all of those subjects, and they're working in groups of five, so it's 
it's 25 groups of kids that are you know designing and researching come up with character imagery and models and we've been fortunate to be kind of a part of that process and giving them feedback and telling them about what we do for a living and it's been really fun to kind of watch them work together so we are moving into construction documentation which will get us ready for bid and permit sets and then bidding will happen um, in March of next year hopefully I'm a contractor selected before April and then kicking off construction in April 12 month construction time frame to be done April of 2025 months ahead of the deliverable date in case there's any pickups along the way which you can all expect will happen rain yeah rain so this is where the park sits today with all the project budget and scope items that were part of the original master plan um, this is where I kind of wanted to talk about the park so the biggest things are you know the William and Martha Brown home the picnic pavilion that faces the Brown home plaza area uh, parking lot with trailhead ADA access to the pavilion and then once you leave there it's natural trails overlook points uh, we worked with the cross-country coach to um, site and look at trails for holding state meets so lots of people lots of use um, you can see this being used similar to other parks where you know beach high school where any of the <coughs> schools can come and practice here state meets here if you haven't been out to the site before you know it's hilly and wooded and it should be a really really interesting cross-country course as opposed to like steeplechase in Nashville and so that's been really fun to work with them on how to figure out how the trail would meander and how that race would be set up. Um, and then on the southern portion of the property, signalized crossing for um, safety, um, ADA access to the amphitheater. Uh, there is one bridge crossing because of creek. The amphitheater is more um, boulder seating, um, terraced into the landscape. Um, that's like uh, Kim was getting after. That, that could be, you know, Shakespeare, um, small plays, it could be small music events, um, educational opportunities for the kids to have classrooms out there. Um, and then, you can't see down here, but the rest of it is uh, natural trails. We're proposing native seed, so to cut costs on maintenance. So we're only maintaining 10 foot wide walkable trails. And yeah, so that's. Are, are those, are, are the, the ones that are not ADA compliant, is that problematic for somebody? <laughs> uh, it shouldn't be, because I mean, obviously you've been to parks before. Right. You can't maintain ADA access to every point, so we're providing ADA access to the main pavilions, plazas, amphitheaters, right. big events. Yeah. Um, but once you get above a certain slope percentage, you know, and especially it would be really hard to put concrete everywhere so yeah i just um, don't know if federal law is yeah on. federal we don't have to okay it's good. a natural part so yeah. yep could you explain native seed yeah native seed. so people don't understand that terminology yeah native seed is great uh native seed instead of using fescue and maintaining you know cutting grass weekly during the summer monthly right <clears throat> native seed is pollinators uh, meadows it's uh birds bees uh introduction of quail right it's their habitat so you've got there's a bunch of different types of native seed mixes um, we're working through that right now but um, it's grasses uh, flowers things of that nature and you only have to maintain it once a year or twice a year um, you're talking about native seed that doesn't grow as fast as fescue is that what you're talking about yes okay yeah. but I fescue is not native and it's invasive so you know we're proposing but native species and take it back to what it originally was <clears throat> and to, again to cut down on maintenance <clears throat> we don't want somebody to have to cut grass every week so does that mean we allow trees to come up and go or is that yeah um you know most of it will get cut out due to the natives growing in but there's potential that some cedars might pop up here and there and oaks might pop up um it makes maintaining those areas hard when there's more trees but i think you know due to the maintenance staff currently i think you just let it go back to your sure. natural sure i guess the reason why i ask is that all the untouched land that i've seen around here that's native 
if you will, is usually about three feet tall. So that's why I'm asking. I'm not understanding the, the concept of native seed. Yeah, so there's a bunch of different species that can be a native seed, and they can range anywhere from three inches on the ground to eight feet tall. Obviously, we're not going to specify eight foot tall plants, right? I've never so, seen any of the three inch stuff. We will have yeah. some wildflowers as well. Yeah. The pollinators uh, yeah. hopefully will attract butterflies. Yeah. So, so it will look pretty when left tall, yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. Yep. Yes. But as far as the trails and all the points of access, they're going to have to be mowed, period. Yes. Yes. Just the trails. And yep. most of them are already natural. There, there are some already old farm roads, that the, that's what we're intending to use. And the school would then take this on as part of their yes. regular mowing yep. for, yes, for the county-wide mowing maintenance. schedule? Yeah, and they're already mowing it now. Yep. So the mowing, instead of mowing 82 acres, it's going to go down to a lot less okay. to just the trails themselves. So then they can focus their efforts elsewhere. Okay. I'm seeing Bermuda. <laughs> yeah, not Bermuda. <laughs> that ain't native. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, native. I'd like to see some three inch stuff because I want to put it in my yard. <laughs> yeah, so um, the next slide is just more of a zoom in on the uh, Brown Home Pavilion in the plaza area. Again, this can be used on a daily basis for picnics, birthdays, etc. But for state cross country meets, having a bigger hardscape zone for teams to set up, events to happen. Um, we are proposing trees in this one location um, to provide shade for events and for where people actually congregate. We're not proposing trees anywhere else on site just due to lack of irrigation. Um, but a main kind of central gathering plaza, pavers for stage, depending on how large the event is. The pavilion will house two restrooms, um, storage, and potentially a kitchenette for uh, catering events. I think, go ahead. Is there any architectural consistency between the house and the pavilion? Yes. How big is the parking lot that at the trailhead? Yeah, it's currently shown, I think, with 20 spaces. Um, the intent for that is daily users, hikers. Um, when there's larger events, <clears throat> it'll probably be on off days like weekends, and parking will have to happen either in some lawn areas where they might have to get maintained for just that period of time or at the elementary school or middle school. So I think keeping events either after school hours or on the weekends is probably in the future. What's the walking distance from any of those spots to the place where the events would be? I would say... Is that 100 yards or 200, 300? Probably closer to 100. again some walls steps for again outdoor classroom plays maybe small musical events um, you know picking parties kind of things pretty pretty basic with you know just this would be your only mode path kind of around and everything else would be left to native is there a parking lot for that structure is no this is across the creek so it would be the, the tree is it the tree line uh, above to the top? Is that the creek? Yes. Yeah, so the creek runs basically down Wolfpack Way. So any any um, events held there, people would have to go to that smaller parking in order to cross over to go back to the amphitheater? Yes. Yeah. And it'll be an ADA accessible trail down How long is that path? Um, to get from a school, that. either of the schools, to the amphitheater. Yeah, I don't have that number offhand, but that is one thing that we've been it discussing. Looks like that if it's during mile. school, they would have to drive or walk them to the parking lot and have to take up a couple class periods, I would assume. But, um, that looks like there needs some work on that. 
because we don't have shuttles to to do that. If they did any kind of an event at the amphitheater at all. Okay. So, currently, um, we are working with Southeast Ventures on the architecture for the picnic pavilion. Um, this is where it sits currently, um, using wood, and probably going to have to stain it in order for it to look similar to the wood from the William Mark Brown House. We'll see what that exterior looks like once the brick is removed. Um, Stone, native stone, uh, limestone for Tennessee, um, and then obviously there will have to be some sort of roof component, whether that's standing seam or um, shingles. I'm not sure what that is yet. What's standing seam? Metal roof? Yes. Yeah. So the, um, the original precedent for this pavilion was uh, Rock Castle. If any of y'all Next slide. This is the floor plan, all open um, stone columns, men's and women's restroom, storage, and kitchenette for catering. So, like sink space, potentially a microwave. And the entrance to the restroom will be on the interior side. Yep. That's a difference from Rock Castle. Catering for, so the kitchenette, what, what all will be inside that kitchenette? There was discussion about um, a sink to be able to wash things off and a microwave for t potentially heating things back up. And then who would maintain the usage of that? The schools also? Would like rental or use of this pavilion be done through the schools? The county would take on that? Yeah. Joint venture or either or? We'll have the discussion which is not finalized, but yes, the intent of the park was to play a joint venture in the maintenance and the storage of the pavilion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have the Which trustees? You said it would not be trustees? They would not be trustees because they don't have the capacity to do that. So it would be the school maintenance. Do trustees, like jail trustees? Mm -hmm. yeah, do they, they do some of the schools? They run the Green Wave currently mm -hmm. and some of the other county parks. But none of the schools? No, the schools have their own money. Yeah, I figured that would be a reason in and of itself for them not to mow. Is, schools. is the... Um, the grant requirements, everybody calls the strings attached, is that in that green book? Uh, that's the Parks Master Plan. That's the Parks Master yeah. Plan. Yeah. Is it possible to get the, the agreements, the grant agreements? The grant contract was in your budget packet, so that, that's... Okay, so... Yeah. Okay. Y'all should, should have access to that already. It was, I think, in your budget packet September and October. Oh. Okay. Um, it may not lay out all of those requirements, but if you have any questions, feel free to contact me and I can run okay. through everything. So the, on the contents of this, I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, were you done? Go ahead. Yeah. The contents of this um, pavilion is um, one men's toilet, two urinals, or no, one... It's one a, sink and two toilets, or one on one? It's a two stalls, men's and women's. So four nope. total, one's ADA on each. So two ADA stalls and two non ADA stalls. So no urinals, just two stalls and two stalls? Correct. Okay. So, was there facilities at the amphitheater? Oh, there's not. What are, I mean, that's quite a haul out there to the amphitheater. I would. Imagine there'd be some kind of facilities out there because once you get there, it's going to take a while to get anywhere else. This was part of our short term goals, and this was the first concept plan for phase one of the park. 
um, and we had a budget with them to, to work with. There will be amendments as we go along with the Parks Master Plan, just as we talked with the fifth grade students, even some of the ideas that the fifth grade students are coming up with, we told them there's a possibility that we can amend our Parks Master Plan and have a phase two and apply to the TDEC for phase two for the construction of the park. So these were kind of, as, as part of the master plan process, this was the priorities that came as part of the short-term goals. There will be opportunities to do the mid and long-term goals to add more amenities as we go. So as we have it now, though, the plan is to do it like this, and then if we want to change anything, we add to. Is there an option to go back and redo anything, or is this in stone if we, we go are forward with it? required to have these main components as part of the grant. So we have to have the ADA parking in the parking area. We have to have the ADA pass. I'm not talking about ADA so stuff. Pass. We yeah. have to have the picnic pavilion sure. and the theater and the open structures. At this point, we can't amend anything unless we get to the point where we fit it out and we're way over budget. Then we can have those discussions of trying to talk with TDEC to amend our projects. So, so for example, though, if we want to add bathrooms at the amphitheater or add more facilities of uh, fixtures at the um, um, uh, pavilion, mm -hmm. could we take away from some other aspect of the plan to put them there? Or would that be an addition that we'd have to it would be an addition, so apply yeah. for more TDEC money and, and match another, yeah. do another match do that, to, for taxpayer money? If it was something that you all deemed it a high priority, Fund that 100% from the county funds. We could pay for it ourselves as a taxpayer money, not, so not ask for extra from the state. Yeah. yeah, and to reiterate that, especially for the restroom, um, during big events, especially like cross country meets, you know, there'll, there'll be port pies on site, especially for you know, large gatherings. That'll be handled <laughs> by that event coordinator. Um, if you go to, again, you know, most other parks, there's usually only two restrooms and not a lot of. Um, stalls. So, well, for a park of this size, there's usually multiple places to use the restroom with two restrooms in each, with two fixtures in each. Like I said, this is the start of a park, so we got to start somewhere, yeah. and then we can add, add to it as we go. Um, I, I know we're getting into the weeds a little bit, but would a pass-through window make sense from the kitchenette to the? We actually, that was we actually talked about that. Okay. Yeah. And, um, I think we we're going to add it as an alternate. So with the restroom, we're going to add in some alternates that if, if we do go over the budget, because this is one item on the budget that we feel like could affect our budget and cause, cost? An, uh, cause an overage because of all the timbers and the limestone and just what we're seeing with material costs. This is one item. We're a little concerned with on the budget. Sure, sure. No, I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the last slide is just uh, an idea for the smaller shade structure with the three overlook points and the three whole sides. Mm -hmm. uh, basic timber frame, again, uh, metal roof, stone columns. If y'all are interested in adding restrooms to the amphitheater, you can have CSDG look at that. What's the likelihood of that cost to be? And bring it back to y'all if that's something that y'all wanted to look at. Or it's something we can plan for in the future through the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. That's planning out the master plan, short, mid, and long term goals for this park. Right. So, what, what this is the bare minimum required by the grant and TDEC? Okay. And it's kind of the, it's one of the, it is the short term goals as part of the master plan. If you look in the parks master plan, there's short, mid, and long term goals. So okay. over time, you're going to have different priorities based on usage. Over time, it changes who's using the park, who's not. So you, your parks master plan is a moving block. It's, it's subject to revision every five years, is kind of what we've been told to. Yeah. To take a look at it because it can change. Your priorities can change. So you've been massaging it to stay within a hundred, with a one and a quarter million dollar budget. And does that include architecture? Is architecture on top of that? No, that's in that number. That's in that number. Yeah. And so when that additional funding came into place, that didn't affect our number. 
Okay. So we did not receive any extra funds for that. That was straight to capital improvements. Okay. Do I have one last question? And but if anybody else has questions, you know, pipe in. The um, the do we have we worked on any budget annual budget for maintenance of everything? We have not. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming there will, I mean, beyond mowing, there will be ongoing maintenance of the house. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just, I mean, in the last two weeks, we've gotten these concepts for the restrooms and everything, so just getting through the design phase. Okay. So when you said house, you're talking about the brown, brown house. house. Yes, yeah. so the brown house is excluded from this <coughs> project. Okay, but who's maintaining? Well, it, it says in this document here that we are. What know. have we been? Are we? <laughs> well, that, that's that's why I wanted these documents because I wanted to, and that's why I, I will get those documents from Kim regarding the grant. But that is in here. Well, it says in the first paragraph. It says this. Uh, uh, where was that? Yeah. Um, House at two two twelve Homes Lane here, so we'll see. The historic home currently situated there and being currently maintained by the county as the park centerpiece. Permanently maintained. So it is the park centerpiece, but it's not. But it says permanently maintained by the county, so it doesn't mention the school district there. But it's not part of the park. As far as usage, what is it for? And have we been maintaining well, it? I think you said this is not part of the, the one and a quarter million dollar budget. It's not part of the park because... Oh, it's not even part of the park. Well, it's excluded because with the park, when you apply for the grant funds, it has a notice of limitation of use. So forever and always, this will be a park. The ground home, over time, we don't know. I mean, just due to the age of it, it didn't make sense. We have to give it to another nonprofit to to take care of because once you have the notice of limitation of use, it has to be a park forever. So the ground home was excluded. We so could that possibly way, do that. Just tear it down if they wanted, then it wouldn't be part of the park. Well, that's not the intent because it's going to be a focal point. There'll even be a trail on around the ground home, it's, and the pavilion is centered. Yep. And educational signs. Not the county could give this. Home it, to it, a nonprofit yeah. to maintain. Just gave, it leaves the options open. If not, it always has to be a park. Is there historic significance, uh, significance to this house? Yes, it, it's, it was built around the Revolutionary War. It's in the late 1700s. Oh, We're wow. still doing all the research. Kenneth Thompson is actually, as part of the STEAM STEM designation, Kenneth Thompson is. The local historian is starting to do the research on the ground home, and he's going to do a presentation to the fifth grade class um, as well as part of the history of the ground home. So that's a piece. Of I did not realize it was that old. Have so it's older house? than the bridal house. It's around the same same time frame. So have we had a possession of that since June of fifteen or February of seventeen? The house, actual house. It, he, Mr. Brown, had a life estate, so he lived there until his until his seventeen. Yeah. So we've had possession of since then. Yes. And the county has been taking care of it. Yes, the schools have been taking care of it. The schools have been. Yeah. But this says that the county is. So like I said, we have a joint agreement for this property because it is county owned and Board of Education owned. Do you have it's, that? It's very like, sticky. Do you have that <coughs> laid out? Because I know we ran into this issue with the library of joint stuff and nobody knew where the lines were. So do you have that laid out to where we, we could see we're where? We're required to have an MOU as part of the grant. Do you have it? Yes. Can we get it? We're going to have to do a deep dive on this because that's it, number one. This is really busted into two things. It's the home and the park, and then it's the technology trust. And one's very short, and it specifically says that the home currently situated there being permanently maintained by the county is the park centerpiece. So I don't that's think we, as a county, have much latitude over what we do with that other than maintain it pursuant to the $500,000 that was given as part of that. Now this is one of the codicils to the will which is basically a will amendment. I have not been able to get a copy of the original will or the will that this is a part of 
from the clerk yet, but uh, I'll have to do a dive on that. But this is this is messy. Pretty lockstep here. The intent has been for the brown home to be kind of the centerpiece. Then wait, the centerpiece or in the center of the park? Because that's two different things. If it's not usable by anybody in the park and not accessible to anybody in the park, it's just really a well, we location is in the middle of the park. Said what's going to be in there, but the county could use it as an office I mean, as part of the park eventually. You know what? I think at this point we should let the legal review it and get the original. Come back to us with these answers. answers. Come back. We just got this too. Yeah, because I, I, I can see it's really messy and nobody's got all the answers and I, I think our law office needs to help us with that. We need to get the documentation. But but the only question that I had that, that kind of do dived off into is you said the county has it, but the school's been maintaining it up to now, right? That doesn't make any sense. But then you said it was in bad shape. So if it's been maintained, it would be in bad shape. I'm thinking it's like the Draper House, but it hasn't been vandalized like the Draper House. No, it's just been sitting there. Can you, can you is this, is this kind of like a up in the air thing, or do you know? What do you mean? Like, what's your specific? How is the school involved at all if this is saying it will be maintained by the county? Has the school actually been maintaining it? Yes. They their maintenance yes. department it's goes down and works on it. Up. They, they check on it regularly. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I don't want to send everybody down the weeds here, and I want to be very clear. I don't think what I'm saying hinders this. No. But you all were talking about doing things with the house. That's where the deep dive is going to come in. Right. Because So when we get to that point, that's when I think we really need to make sure we understand the provisions that were outlaid. And, and and why we wanted to see all of the documentation we could is because we're responsible for the properties this committee is, and we will make re recommendations to budget. And if we can't ascertain what costs are going to be, then we're not doing our job for the budget committee. So so I think, I think we're not ready to pass anything on. I mean, we're already well into this thing. We're getting ready to to start construction drawings on the 13th of December. And so, I, you know, I don't see that there's any turning back, but we may be able to, I mean, they're doing a great job trying to keep the costs within budget. And that was my only point. This is an apples oranges thing, right? We're talking about right, right now. Right, but I, 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 it's gonna come fast and furious. If I don't agree with that. Is your commentary based off of the statement that was made that we could give it away? Yeah, somebody, y'all started right. talking about what to do with the that's house, right. and I wanted to rein that in. That's really She said it. She said that. Than, <laughs> well, I mean, and that's fine. I just wanted everybody to have a good <coughs> Yeah, we, we just want the facts, and, and so, you know, what... what well, and we're going to have to maintain all this as well, so we'll be on the hook with, apparently, with the, an agreement with the schools to maintain, so, I mean, we need to know what we're looking at. So at some point in time, somebody stops and somebody starts. Yeah. So there's a lot of money in that gray area. I didn't mean to give the house away. I meant that if you wanted, kind of like we have with the bridal house, you have a nonprofit that is like helping with the maintenance and usage of it. Because yeah. if you had it as part of the park, the county would be responsible for that maintenance with the notice of limitation of the use, just like the rest of the park. So that's kind of where I'm at. So you might get in a situation. A friends of situation. Yes, a friends group. No, we don't do no friends of stuff. That was never the intent. The yeah. house was supposed right. to be as part of the donation for Mr. Brown. This and it's an historic house. It's a it should be. House. Yes. <coughs> it should be taken. Down. Yes. So, so we have torn down here. things that were perfectly okay. We and I want to make sure that doesn't happen. Interpretive signage around the house that's mm -hmm. historic. Okay. Any other questions? So I'm going to ask that we put this on old business and ask our, our law department to pick up everything we can so that we can start to uh, really understand who's maintaining it. Uh, Ken, when would, what, what will it take to determine a budget 
for maintenance? Is that anything that you can even do? Or? I think once we know what the size of this freshman facility is going to be, then we can run some preliminary numbers on electrical, plumbing, what those costs will be for, for the utility bills. Because I think that's going to be your main maintenance cost. Yeah, I, I and don't. And I believe as part of the MOU, there was an amount. I don't know where they got that amount, but there was an amount that we were going to give towards the schools every year towards the maintenance. Okay. I don't remember that figure off the top of my head, but there was an amount that I know that was in there. Um, okay. That we would obligate as part of our budget every year towards the schools for the maintenance. It, but it, that number would be a, since it's not here yet, we just have to yeah. see, open up the park, see what the cost of maintenance are going to be. That could fluctuate. Yeah. If you could just keep that in a tickler file and, and, so, and help us unravel it, yeah. then we'd be able to make a recommendation. For and budget. I'm happy to answer any questions as we go along in this in Great. process. Great, thank you. Go ahead. Tim. One more question is, uh, who currently is maintaining the insurance on this house? The county, it's on the county property schedule, I believe. Yes. Okay. I think we're done. Thank you very much for the presentation. Thank you. Okay. So, with the uh, yeah, uh, we'll come back in session. So moved. Do you have to vote on that or do do it? Do we? No, we don't have to vote. On okay. Bring we're it back. back in session. Okay. Uh, Recognition of the public. We have somewhere. <laughs> What's there somewhere? This is Kevin Baker, 424. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you already knew that. I knew that. I don't have it. I'll find it. It's somewhere. It's somewhere. It was there because I borrowed Deborah's phone to sign it. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, well, listen, we don't want to let this thing go too much longer. First of all, you know, you, you allayed a lot of my fears with this discussion. Um, I have to admit, I wasn't prepared as I normally would be when I first saw this thing. I hadn't had time to go through it, and, I, and right away, the hair on the back of my neck started going up, and I started thinking about all the recurring costs and all that stuff, and the, the issues about who owns the land and joint agreements. Um, we've all been involved with joint agreements, and you know how that ends up. Um, Somebody gets burnt in the end, but anyhow. So I applaud the the, the discussion here. Um, you know, when I look at this timeline or the proposed timeline, most of this stuff happened before anybody. Who, yeah, I think anybody was in on this committee in this room. Even I. I mean, we knew very little about what was going on. Um, so, and I'm kind of jumping around here. You know, we, we've still got issues with the, the sewer line coming out of there. Are we going to end up getting tagged for hooking into the sewer that doesn't work for, um, for this? You know, who's going to maintain this stuff? You, you all talked about that, and that, that's wonderful. Um, originally, I had concerns about planting a middle school under a 500 kVA transformer line in the, the, the magnetic fields. I'm glad my kids aren't going there, but... Um, when you have a park like this, there's all kinds of liabilities and expenses. I applaud you all for starting that dialogue. I heard more tonight than I heard in, in many, many years of Gen Ops discussions about this kind of stuff. And um, I'm sure I probably forgot something. I'll, I'll talk to you later about it. But I mean, I do. I, I so sincerely appreciate the kind of effort. Because down the road, this is going to be recurring costs. And voila. Next thing you know, um, especially if it ends up being part of the maintenance of effort, if, if the schools are somehow involved, then, then our hands are tied again. But so appreciate it. Keep up the great work, y'all. Thank you. Okay. That concludes recognition of public. So, uh, old business, uh, which the, the mayor uh, talked about, the meeting on 12 11 at 1 p.m in his conference room. Uh, question I have is, will the specifications already have been drawn, or is this a pre-specification meeting, Mr. Mayor? Uh, the specifications, that was done in the bid process, in the RFQ. Kim, am I correct on that? Yes. 
Or will that will all that be discussed in that meeting? This will be our first meeting with Walls for the archive. So we'll yeah. go over the RFP that we had put out and then talk with them on that. They haven't started anything on the archive yet. This Good. will be our first meeting. And, you know, and our goal is <coughs> them to take the information, do an independent review, and then come back with options. That, that's their role. Uh, I don't want to try to guide that process. I want it to be independent. Uh, but that's what that meeting will start out. Uh, the jail has already moved past that point. Okay, so there there is a <coughs> specification on the jail? Uh, the jail is, yeah, they should come back with their report here pretty soon. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to provide an update on the jail design at next meeting as well. And again, they'll bring options to the table. Can, can we get that report as soon as you do? I imagine it'll be at the meeting. That's the oh, okay. Meeting. They'll present it at the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Uh, Mr. Jones. Um, I apologize. This is probably going to be awkward, but because of the nature of meetings, I have to address the chair. Um, this, I've been watching the back and forth between you and the mayor on the roof stuff. Is that this one or is that the next one? Uh, that's actually both, both. Both of them. I don't like waiting for uh, responses to the next monthly meeting when we could prepare for that if the emails had been answered. And I just don't know if there's something we can do to improve that communication. So if you could fix that with the mayor or I'm not supposed to address the mayor no, about this. I, I, but well, and we got that day today, so I brought it to you as that, soon as I could get it. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is, was that just so newly that, that was known? Yeah. Okay. I just I wish there was something said I, I, along the way about yeah. trying to get it because the not knowing it, was... At least an answer to an email? Yeah, an answer to an email just so Some I could... communication? So that I could yeah, I know that it's coming tonight instead of find out tonight because mm -hmm. I've been waiting for that for a few weeks now. Yeah. Yeah. So if y'all if y'all could both just do that. Yeah. So I Mr. think you were doing your part. If Mr. Mayor can just at least say that it's coming. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, if you can respond to emails and more he may be super busy and that's understandable, but it's a reply that I'm coming or I'm getting it. Okay. Is A and B coming off? Are we keeping that old business? Uh, let's let's keep it on old business since we have a meeting scheduled for the eleventh. <laughs> And we can we can talk about it in January. Uh, item C: Progress in parking structure for the new courthouse. I I uh, am a little confused, Mr. Mayor, about the storm drain issues. Could you elaborate on those? Uh, there are some issues with the uh, stormwater connecting, uh, where we have to do a stormwater uh, the piping out of the uh, out of the parking garage connecting to the city system. Uh, typically, when it's a private developer, uh, the private developer has to pay for that connection. Mm -hmm. uh, so, as a joint project, we're trying to negotiate that per se. And uh, so that's where what we're not bearing all of the cost of connecting to that. So okay, so that's about. what you're meeting on the eighth is with with right. the city of Gallatin to negotiate with their engineers that. and so forth. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll leave that on old business as well. Mr. Sittler, uh, so that we can discuss that next next month. Hopefully, we'll, the mayor will have that resolved with the city. Uh, and we should um, we should keep uh, item D on as old business as well. Uh, I'm going to be requesting some more documentation from Ms. Norfleet, and uh, I will present that. Uh, I'll email that to everybody as quickly as I can get it. Uh, all right, new business. Uh, item A, uh, I'd entertain a motion for discussion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, this hit us pretty suddenly last Monday. And uh, I was first made aware of what it was about through a, a video from a newscast on the TV. And uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm, 
hoping that you can elaborate on this. Uh, the, the quote on the TV was supply chain problems, internal issues, and a delay for some communications gear, and that uh, the latest would be June of 2024. Uh, this is kind of a major hit to the commission. I, I would have loved to have an email from you at, when, when you first discovered this. Um, can you, is, is this the, uh, the beginning and the end of the problems? I, I, I don't even know. So well, we failed an inspection. This was, uh, it's called a building commission, commissioning inspections, which uh, I am learning this piece by piece. That, that quote wasn't quite accurate. Uh, okay. You know, you know how media tends to embellish. Um, but uh, here's where we are with some anticipated dates. Okay. This is what I got uh, from my most recent meeting. Um, from the, uh, the elevator smoke curtains, which is one of the issues that we're dealing with, we're dealing with two issues. One is um, the, uh, the radio communications, which when they did the testing, they learned that in the basement there was areas that they could not uh, receive communications or project communications. So from there, they have to do some wiring, uh, do some different things to bring the radio codes for emergency personnel up to standards uh, for life safety issues. Uh, going back to the elevator, uh, architectural review, let's see, uh, the drawing submitted to Turner December 4th of 2023, and these are all anticipated. And so the fourth is going on right now. Uh, architectural review, they're thinking that's going to be done by December 18th. County release spending money. Uh, this is why we called a special call budget meeting. <coughs> uh, and all of this came to us this week. Uh, so uh, we had a meeting with Chairman uh, Shove to do a special call budget meeting. Well, we're hoping through the budget process that the county will release the money and talk about the time frame that I'm talking to you about now. Uh, we'll need a resolution for approval for that money. Uh, the estimated cost of that will be roughly $379,000, okay? Now, we are looking at legal options going forward. I uh, don't really want to talk about those right now, uh, but it, it's the, the process that we have to go through. Uh, let's see, based on the meeting, the budget meeting, uh, we'll look for a change order, uh, the AIA document approval process. Uh, if it gets approved at that budget meeting and by the full commission, then estimated material release is January 4th. Estimated current material lead time will be February 15th and delivery date of that. Estimated door material lead time is March 7th. Estimated installation start by Turner March 15th. Go to be completed is April 1. And that's all based on being approved at this next special call bu uh, budget meeting. Um, and we'll have Chairman Schultz been involved in this. It, he will uh, be happy to speak more about it. Uh, the final commissioning is still occurring uh, until all commissioning inspections are complete. Uh, there's still going to be that possibility of additional expenses. Um, this is part of the process that I'm learning on building a $100 million building. The commissioning process, this testing happens after the fact. Uh, we, uh, I've learned that we can't, uh, I can't say that I agree or disagree with it, but we can't know all of these variables up front. We know them after the fact. Okay, I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules for discussion. I'll make a motion. For Second. That. Okay. Um, I'm going to get in the queue first. Yeah, vote. Get a vote on. Uh, we have to vote. Oh, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, great. Okay. In private enterprise, when if, if I were to contract with an architect to design a building, a contractor to build the building, and he deals with all the subs, we have a term called turnkey. 
and that's after all inspections, everything is done according to the specifications and the blueprints. So when Commissioner Schoff called me today and discussed that as well as another six months for the juvenile court mm -hmm. rental, my, my first thinking because of my training and building is that this is something that is not our responsibility. And so, and he explained to me that, well, we, we're going to have to front the money and then go back and possibly litigate for it. Is this not clear cut in the contract? Apparently not. Uh, that's why we have to litigate. And uh, that, that's the only answer I have. For yeah, no, I, 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 and, I'm not blaming you. You know, for and this. I apologize. I wish I had a better answer for you. But uh, in the discussions that we've had, uh, this is this is what we have to do. Now, you know, obviously we can litigate and come back and do this, but I don't think that's a prudent course of action. Uh, we need to get the courthouse open. We need to finish that project. Yeah, and, and, I, and I understand that. Commissioner Jones? Who are the signatories on that contract? Is it the prior commission? Is it Leah Denon? Is it Anthony Holt? Is it who didn't do their due diligence to tie that contract up? Well, that's and again, this is what I've tons learned. Of money. You can't, you cannot plan for this testing. Yes, uh, you can. Because, well, going by what I'm learning. Yeah. Okay. I understand you, you we learning, can, but this and what we could do is we could overcompensate and say we're going to do all of this to cover every variable, or we can test it. And then find out after the fact. But that's not we. We shouldn't have to do anything. And, and, and that's, that's part why, of the bid well, process. And that's why we're going to have to litigate. That's but, why we're going to litigate because we recognize that it's an error too. Maybe. And we recognize that we're not responsible for it. The, can I go on with another question? Yeah, go ahead. So everything you laid out in the beginning part, um, I like to hear that progress report and milestones. That's what good project managers do in big projects. Um, the, the line of work I come from does that. They have milestones to meet monthly, if not weekly. And that's what I would expect. When I heard that this was delayed, I called Chairman Klein and I asked what the milestone report had been. Why is it, why are we being blindsided with this right now? And why has, um, is it Roy? Uh, uh, or Coy, Coy, Randall Coy. Randall Coy. Um, why has Randall Coy not been giving us this information? And he informed me that he just found out that he wasn't even with the project anymore. Yeah, Randall Coy. It hasn't has, been for several months. Yeah, Randall Coy resigned as of October September. one. Yeah, end of September. Yeah. So who's been the project coordinator from and, that point on? And basically, it's been Kim and uh, and Judge Thompson. Judge Thompson is the lead for the judges, working through it, and then I've been part of some of those meetings as well. When he put in his notice, why wasn't one applied to it? We needed a liaison to keep from being blindsided by this. Uh, why wasn't another project manager hired? Yeah. It was too close to the end of the project. Obviously not. <laughs> I mean, we just got pushed out six months. So it, had it been opening in December, I would expect that. But I would expect also that all was known when Mr. Coy was leaving the project, how far out we were. Because I don't know anybody worth their weight that would leave a project and not show somebody what all is left undone two months out of getting ready to open a building. That That's insane. I just can't believe we don't have one. So, so now that we know we're six months away now, have we... Uh, put out notice for somebody to keep up with this for the next six months? No, sir. Are we going to? No, sir. I think that's our choice, right? We're responsible for construction of new buildings and maintenance of new buildings, are we not? Yes, according By Tennessee to our, code, rule, our rules. And I appreciate everything the mayor has done in his going between the project coordinator and reporting to this committee. Well, he hasn't reported to this committee. Let's well, the, po the places that he has. I found out on the news. Well, I found out on the news too, so I'm a little bit yeah. upset. So 
I appreciate every communication he has given this committee, but it's not enough. It is clearly not enough because um, nobody knew. Did you know that we were six months out? No, not until I've gotten this report. When was that? Wednesday. So you just Wednesday. found out we we're missing our opening date of January 2. Mm -hmm. Do you see the need for better reporting knowing that you just got blindsided also? Oh, yeah. So is that the so um, this, this construction the company's is, job to provide that to us? Well, the construction company provided all of this, and as they've done the testing, they provided the results to us, and then we've worked through those results. No, <laughs> I'm saying that the construction company has to report milestones to us. The project manager, well, and this Randall, was, Randall Coy worked for who? Uh, Randall Coy worked for us, and JPA worked for us. And Turner works for us. Uh, ES, ESOE. ESA is the architect of record. SSOME is the. S, yeah, SSOE is a contractor through, is contracted through ESA. But Randall Coy was an individual? Yes. Just a liaison person that we hired. Right. He gave his money back to the county according to his resignation. Well, we didn't pay him anymore. He said he returned the unused he, portion yeah, of the yeah, contract. He, yeah, I, I, or at least that's right, which he didn't get paid through the end of the contract. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I think it's very important that we have somebody that is reporting to this committee because we can't expect you to be down there all the time. You've got mayoral duties to do here, and I I don't trust a due date that's six months out. Everybody always misses their due date they always do there's promises and then it's somewhere close to that you are you just told us six months out that we have a due date sometime within the month of june that's 30 days for the parking structure well we're so, looking at, at an april completion but of course with the move that's what we're talking about with trying to get juvenile over here that's why we've got the june date is trying to get the move over and with regard to all the testing these companies know that there's going to be testing on every one of these things. That's all put into the bid. Mm -hmm. They know that there's a chance they're not going to pass first time every time. I'm, I'm just really upset and, and uh, well, appalled that we don't have the information before we hear about it on the news. Okay. Jay, Commissioner Miller, you had a question. I probably shouldn't ask it. Let's probably just skip it. Okay. Uh, I, I, do, I, will, I will say this. <laughs> I, I do not think it's fair to lose a project manager and throw this in the lap of a judge and a grant writer. I mean, what, aren't there qual when you hired Randall Coyer, not you, but we, previous the commission. previous commission, <clears throat> previous mayor, when they hired Randall Coy, I'm sure that he had construction background qualifications. I'm sure he, he had a resume that he was looked at very closely, or he was a friend of somebody who knows. But um, he was very qualified. Oh, wonderful. That's great. And, and he should have been qualified. But and I'm not no, nothing to you. I don't think it's fair to you that you have to take this on and a judge to take it on. That I mean, I'm, my mind is blown. I, I, I mean, I don't even know what to say. I'll just say okay. Is this something, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, that we can act upon or suggest or? Well, I think <clears throat> I think what we need to do and, and and we have to act as a team here because we're all fairly new at this and we're being it's blindsided a it's, it's a huge project and it's a huge problem mr mayor i don't understand how um <clears throat> we could have reached substantial completion on september 18th and then still have testing to do that that's really strange to me and i bet it's strange to you as well i you're correct you're correct yeah. go ahead um in the project manager scope of pra the practice for the project manager the monies that was provided in the budget for the project the entirety of the project did it not include a project manager to the entirety of the project was his mm -hmm. salary money so why aren't you 
why aren't you not asking for a project manager to be brought on board That's what to I'm finish the for. project because you have the money in the project to finish it. If you don't have a project manager, you're going to have probably a lot of things that they may not have the expertise to evaluate. That's what I'm asking for. Yeah. So, what's the story? Well, and, and that's, Ms. the mayor received this information on Wednesday. Uh, substantial completion, substantial completion was supposed to be done September 18th. And if that had been true and all inspections, everything had been done the way I would expect it to do, to, to be considered substantial completion, then but, we, we still needed a, a, a consultant for the parking Mr. structure. Mr. Coy left two months ago. Yes. Who knew about him leaving two months ago? We so he's been sitting there for no project manager for two months. That's what I was So asking. nobody <coughs> knew about it other than Mr. Coy? No, I think the mayor knew about it. Did and you know he left Judge, in Judge October? Thompson knew about October we knew he was leaving, yes. So I think that information should have been brought to the committee on October 1. Yeah, and then that is, I will accept that I had the email drafted and I didn't send it. So that, that one's on me. Okay. Now, knowing that, I believe we need to do something from here until the project's completed. I, I, I would agree. It, with, with these kinds of problems, I would say we're there. We, we, the building could catch on fire again tomorrow. We don't know. It could get struck awesome. by lightning. We don't know. Yeah. So we need a project manager on this yeah. until it's finished. Commissioner, um, is there not a contingency on this contract executed by the county? Does anybody know? There wasn't or we just don't know? I, I do not know. I have yet to receive copies to pay for this. I mean, in case of failure, you know, as far as any kind of contingency clauses, or is there a... Uh, so we don't, where is the paperwork for this? Is this something you can provide to us before we meet as a budget? I, I, all that, who executed it? Who signed these documents? Who yeah, I, I've asked Ms. Norfleet for a copy, and I know she's digging through a bunch of stuff right now, yeah. but uh, I have not seen it yet. Okay, that'd be great to have before. Yeah, we'll be happy to get that. Oh, yeah. In a timely manner? Before budget, I think <coughs> Mr. Mayor said before budget next week. Well, what... What I was going to say, and, and I can turn this into a motion if if the mayor's uh, feels. Are we in session or out of session? Uh, I, I, yeah, we I, need to come back. We're going to come back in session in a minute, okay. but but so uh, I what just, what exactly are you wanting? I, I would I would like a full written and detailed report on all of the issues. It, it, Outstanding. Outstanding issues, uh, complete with a timeline of inspections, failure notices, reinspections, failed reinspections if they exist, and meetings with all interested parties to see how far back this goes. And, and I can turn this into a motion when we come back. And I don't know if you've got this, Mr. Mayor, but somebody's got got to have the information and there there must be a timeline on when all this happened because I'm I, I really have a problem with Turner on this 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 is not acceptable professional unless there is something so flawed in the in the contract on this building and we know we we ran into that with the fire so uh, I I, even if I read through the whole contract, I don't know that I would understand it all, but I, I think I do have it. So, <coughs> so, so uh, if you think that's feasible, we'll come back into session, Mr. Mayor, and make a... Yeah, well, yeah, we'll put that together. Okay. I'll work with we'll, 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 well, then let's uh, come back into session, and I'd like to make a motion that we have a full written and detailed report on how and why what has happened happened the full extent of the delays that are going to be addressed uh, including inspection dates failure notices reinspections and failed reinspections if if that applies and any meetings with all interested parties on these issues and any meeting minutes by the 
and 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 have this by the end of the week. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. When we get this report, what will this committee be able to do with that information that will not end up in the law director's office anyway? This information will go to the entire commission because we have an emergency meet, budget meeting next Thursday. Now, I, I understand that, but that's, that is the purpose of the committee is to make these reports. So my question is, what are we planning on doing with this information? We won't have it until next month when we meet again. Well, we, so what are we going to do with it? We will have the basics and we, we will understand what is causing the whole six month holdup or till June, uh, April 1st. We will understand what happened. We will have all the information we can possibly have for this meeting because we're going to have to vote on a half a million dollars. I thought it was 370. 370 is just for the work that needs to be done. The balance is for the additional rental on the, the uh, Three, juvenile, three, nine, juvenile three justice. 397 was the rental, correct? 379. 379. Um, <laughs> but, you're gonna vote, but you are going to vote on it at well, the next special call budget meeting. Yes. It's either you vote on it and pass it unanimously. We won't have another meeting until January. That's my question is what are we going to do with it? Well, the budget meeting. We'll make but a recommendation. You're, yeah, you're presenting it to the budget. And then the following week is the commission meeting, and I'm assuming that's where it would ultimately be the recommendation from the budget meeting will go to the commission. <clears throat> well, that's assuming you get a unanimous vote in budget. You can waive the second reading. Right, right, and, and that's what we would need to do. Does yeah. that answer your question? Well, I, I'm still a little fuzzy. I mean, we're making a motion to ask the, the, the mayor and, and Ms. Norfleet put together a report to come to this committee. No, that's well, what you're missing. Can I answer this? Well, then what would we be making a yeah, motion go ahead. for all the commissioners? That way they have it for budget. But it this will committee not delay is making the motion is what I'm getting. At. Yes. We're making a motion to get this information to, all the, to the entire commission so that when we come together, not only is the budget committee, but then the commission, we have the best information we, we for can get. For the most get. amount of time. To, to make a decision on a half a million dollars. I, I don't want anybody going into this blindly. Uh, I realize this is a sense of urgency, and but in order to make a good decision, we have to have all the information we possibly can. And I, I hate to throw and this we at the will, We will put that together. I have no problem doing that. Okay, well, I have no problem assigning it to do that. <laughs> Let me be clear on that. <laughs> Okay. But I, we will work together and to get we'll that out as quickly as possible. To fill in the blanks, but we don't know all, we don't have all the answers at this point, and that's yeah. going to be part of this next step. The project manager would be your key is, on that. One. Is <laughs> yeah. getting the answers to those questions, and also it's going to require probably an insurance adjuster coming in and reviewing what happened, what occurred. Is this a design flaw because it's causing redesign? So right, right, right. Commissioner Jones. Um, Commissioner Holmes uh, interjected the fact that that's where a project manager would come in handy. Um, in lieu of that, is there a way to have someone from Turner or somebody that could help fill in those blanks um, be available to do that? I don't want us digging through everything we have and not use their assets too. Yeah, I was going to reach out to them for the inspection. They still have all that, but answering all the questions on why this occurred those are still being answered by the architect. We have a meeting tomorrow to, to discuss that. So there's still some unknowns out there. So we won't have all the answers by Friday. I just want to make that known. So would it be proper to amend your motion or to make a separate motion to add a project manager back to this project? I, th I think that would be a separate motion. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm ready to vote on yours then. I mean, okay. Is it there I hate to sit down and I'm best to. You might want an advocate for the county. That gives you an advocate. No, no, no. I'm just saying we don't. Right. I mean, is some of the stuff are we diving into stuff that maybe we? I'm just asking a question. Is, is, is it something that Eric might be better? Looking at, I'm not saying that. But I'm trying to look at this information. Is 
you know, with the well, the tight it, schedule. Eric's going to see all of it. Eric no, I, I get that. I'm just this wouldn't Eric. delay anything, but it would give yeah. us somebody to ask these questions to. Yeah, they could so dive in on both that's ends. What, that's what I want to understand. They could dive in on both ends and find these answers and report to this committee. Yeah. Whereas we haven't had that for the last two. Well, months. that's what I just want to be sure that we yeah. would have him to. Would he be able to answer those for us, Mr. Silver? Uh, I, I just want to clarify here that if you do a motion about appointing a project manager, mm -hmm. a new one, mm -hmm. if it's going no further than this committee, this is an advisory position. Right. Otherwise, it's got to go to commission. Right. So I want you. Just wanted to make sure yeah. we weren't hunting one right after this meeting. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, it would have to go to budget because they'd have to appropriate, appropriate exactly. funds for it's it. Got I'm, to I'm sure. Track the same yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and I have to tell you. That so I'll keep it separate. We'll, finding we'll a leave that out for a minute. Qualified to do this is going to be a very difficult job. I mean, uh, Rand McCoy was very, very qualified, done a lot of stuff. And so I. You know, if, if we'd have known he was gone and the mayor's apologized for not sending out the, the memo, uh, I, I think we probably would have pushed hard to get a, a new guy on. I understand. Let's keep going with your yeah, motion yeah. and get back on the Do we know why he resigned? <coughs> yes. Better opportunity. Yes. I, and I think I think it's in the memo that John was going to send out. He, he got a lifetime opportunity offered to him. and. He couldn't. He couldn't turn it down, and I don't blame him. Okay. So, if there are, are there any other questions on the motion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Passes. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Jim, for getting in advance for getting us that information. Okay. Uh, is there a, another motion? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to make the motion that we at least um, send on the budget the recommendation to hire Second. another project manager to this project. Any any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay. Uh, the mayor discussed the. Uh, Fire sprinklers on the third floor. Um, what I would like to do is, he, you said you would you would get a, a fire sprinkler. I meet with fire codes and okay. see what they say about removing all of that. Okay, great, great. Then um, let's do that. Let's put this on old business, and we can talk about it next month. Hopefully we won't have freeze. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oster. <laughs> it, question. On yes, sir. Um, if he finds that we can do it, and there's a, I'm sure there's a fee um, associated with that, is that something he can do with his um, general operations money to take care of, or we have to meet to approve doing it again? I would have to bring back cost estimates. I would venture to guess this is not within our budget. Well, I'd say, I'm, I'm asking because time would be of the essence coming into the cold uh, months. That's about when it happened last time was what, January, February, Christmas, right? Christmas, yeah. Christmas, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, yeah. And I, yeah, and I would Christmas. still have to bring cost estimates back to you uh, because y'all would want those before you send in the budget to get How cost soon? estimates for them. How soon do you think you could find an answer on whether it's fee whether it's within codes to do it? I'd call them tomorrow. I can't tell you how quick they'll come out. But would I'm Marshall calling. or somebody know the answer to that if you just called he them might. and looked at it? He might. Would it Would it be <clears throat> in our best interest to approve up to a certain amount to send a budget and let them make that decision and, and get it done quick? Because yeah. we're not spending any money. We're just making the advisement to allow them to make that decision to spend money. I'm just asking the committee. I know, but by doing this, we've already approved a certain amount that they can just we can say yes or no to. We have no idea. We have no we, idea. We, yeah, we don't even that's, have a rough estimate. I could, yeah, I yeah. could. I would say ten thousand yeah. dollars or less. Yeah, you're yeah. cutting a pipe and putting a cap on it. <coughs> yeah, draining the system is the is the trick, and and I'm I just don't know the mechanics of that, how they would do that. I wouldn't think it'd be that big a deal. I'm sure it happens with tests. Drain probably for about eight hours. Yeah, that December. When when uh, when we were draining it all out when it burst, 
my water drained outside that building for about eight hours. Well, it was melting too for eight hours. I'm saying if you drain the system now, I'm sure it would drain in probably about 15 minutes. Mr. Mayor, do you? Same amount of water in it. No, but frozen. It was frozen and leaking and, and warming and draining and dripping. And okay. Do you so, remember what the total oh, bill was? I'm saying you purge the system with air, you blow it out and cap it and recharge the system. Yeah, well, they may not have to drain the whole building. but Right, I, I, that's why I don't know. But that's not a lot of money. It's time. Yeah. But as far as supplies and money, it's not a lot of that. It's hours on the clock is all we're talking about. Mr. Mayor, Caps, do you or Ms. Northfleet remember what the total bill was of just the pipe repair? No, I'd have to go back. And okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to save some time. If, if we can yeah. get this in motion, we know it needs to be done. I just think you need a general idea. You just have no idea. It's, it's, we, we, I'd like to bring more information. Is back. it something he can yeah. bring straight to budget then, or do we have to approve it? You, you probably could do that. Yeah. Mr. Sitwell? If I can get it in time. Well, the budget agenda is already set <coughs> for this month. We can't put it on. You could put it on the 14th, though, in the special call, couldn't you? No. No. Notice is going out for that today. Okay. okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll just move as fast and cross pray, our fingers. pray to God and cross our fingers. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, with your. Sorry. Thanks. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?